Okay, so I've mentioned in some of my recent videos that I've been in a little bit of a reader, reading slump. And if you're a, an avid reader, you know how frustrating that can be. All you want to do is read, but every book you pick up just doesn't seem to be doing it. You can't click with it. And, and, and I think that there's a couple different things at play there. Like some of it may just be like honestly willpower, like just, just tough it out a little bit and, and, you'll, and you'll, you'll get back into the groove. Uh, and, and, and then some of it is like genuinely sometimes you just need a break from reading even if you love it. You know, you need a, all things in moderation, right? Um, which is really hard to, uh, for a reader to say about reading. Um, but anyway, that 45 second intro aside, uh, I did finish, uh, I've been finishing books more f frequently recently and I don't want to miss out on the opportunity to tell you about this book. So bam, I'm talking about Star Wars The High Republic The Rising Storm by uh, Kavan Scott, Kevin Scott. Uh, I'm honestly not sure how to pronounce his first name and I should know how, but I don't. So I'm so sorry uh, if I messed it up. Uh, one of those is probably right. But uh, first of all, I have uh, the Target exclusive cover. Uh, I really, really liked the cover from the Target exclusive version uh, featuring Bell Zetafar uh, right there on the front. Uh, this, this book, y'all, whoo, this book. Okay, so first of all, if you don't know, I do host a podcast in which I talk about Star Wars, the High Republic stuff, co-hosted by Gary Mastriano, who is the uh, uh, saxophone player for the ska band Backyard Superheroes. Um, and we've been specifically talking about the Star Wars High Republic sort of line of books, comics, and that kind of stuff. We will have an episode coming out before too long in which we talk about this book, and we're going to also talk about this point, the, this book, The Race to Crash Point Tower, which is a book I'm currently uh, reading. Um, but okay, so uh, I, it's hard to talk about this without talking too much about the books that came before it. That's the thing about books in a series, and you don't want to spoil those previous books. But this is the second adult novel in the High Republic series, um, and this this is this one's written by a different author than the first book, which was written by Charles Soule, um, which I believe was called Light of the Jedi. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so some stuff went down in Light of the Jedi, and basically just to talk about it without telling too much about it, I may have already done a book talk video about Light of the Jedi at this point. I have done so many book talks, I sort of forget which books I've talked about. But, uh, you know, this is the, the highest point of the Jedi. Like, they are at sort of the golden age, highly respected. The world is, the, the galaxy is at peace. And what they're trying to do is work with the Republic to help build the Republic in, in, in the pursuit of uh, unity and, and support across the galaxy, right? We're gonna all help each other out. Um, but during Light of the Jedi, uh, we discovered a new like sort of challenge, which is a, sort of a gang of marauders called the Nile. And the Nile uh, have kind of discovered a way to uh, travel light speed, uh, in a way that's never been known before. So they could just sort of show up anywhere at any time and wreak havoc. Well, this book, uh, it's been a year since the things that happened in the light of the Jedi, and they're about to hold this sort of giant fair. And the fair is to say, Hey, we're still doing good. We're coming together. The galaxy, you know, this is a time to be like hopeful and positive and believe in good things. Right. Um, However, in the midst of that, uh, the, the Nile sort of show up and, and, and bad things happen. I, I don't want to give too much away. What I do want to say is what is so powerful about this book and about the High Republic, I think, in general, is number one is that we're seeing characters uh, in the High Republic books that are Jedi but have like specific sort of almost like career focuses, which is something we haven't really seen before, and it's fascinating. Um, we are seeing uh, young, a lot more young characters, you know, young Padawans who have just become Jedi Masters, who are wrestling with their identity, wrestling with, do I really know what I'm doing? Sort of that question that you have when you leave and go to college or graduate college and try and start your life. Do I have any idea what I'm really doing? Um, we are seeing uh, characters who are suffering from loss from the events of Light of the Jedi and the previous books, you know, the, the, the books in the first sort of wave of phase one of the High Republic books. Um, we're also seeing characters that are wrestling with 
what if I don't believe exactly as the Jedi believe, you know? Uh, we've been trained that this is the way to believe, this is how you act. What if I don't believe it exactly that same way, you know? And, and what if the way in which I act is not uh, that the Jedi don't support that, but I believe that there's a purpose for that. We're also seeing new unique characters. This book introduces a character who's going to show up later called Ty York. And Ty York is kind of a, a form, it seems like former Jedi, you know, has a lightsaber, has some training, uh, who has cut themselves off from the Jedi and is uh, focused on, you know, a career of either being a bodyguard or sort of monster hunting. And uh, we see that sort of start here and get some background uh, that I think is going to be explored in a later work. Um, we've seen, uh, we've lost characters in the books already. Uh, not like a Game of Thrones way of losing, like where everyone's being murdered, but we've lost some characters. But I do feel like this is one of the books where we see our, uh, like, one of the first really deep, deep losses. It, it's happened before. But I don't know, I felt like I felt this one more. Um, one of the things that's happening in here is you have this gang called the Nile who are sort of in a lot of ways like anarchists who have just sort of agreed to support each other temporarily for, uh, because they can help each other. Um, but like how long can a, a, an agreement stand when you're kind of an anarchist? Like how, how long can you be a part of a, a, a governing body when you don't believe in that? And um, so... So many fascinating aspects of the Force in this book. So many fascinating um, aspects of just the Republic. Uh, characters to be really fond of. There are unique species that I don't think have been explored in quite the same way as there are in this book. Guys, this, this, this Star Wars High Republic stuff is, is where it's at. If you're not reading it, you definitely need to pick it up. Now, this book's just about 425 pages, um, but it goes really quick. The audiobooks of these are fantastic. If you've never heard a Star Wars audiobook, I'm almost done. This is a little bit of a longer video than I normally do. Uh, the next book I'm going to read is The Race to Crash Point Tower, which actually happens in the middle of the rising storm, but from the perspective of a couple of other characters, uh, one of whom we've only been briefly introduced to and haven't heard a lot about. So The Rising Storm by Kevin Scott, uh, this one, The Race to Crash Point Tower by Daniel Jose Older, and I'll be talking about this book hopefully pretty soon. If you've not read any of the Star Wars High Republic books, man, pick it up. 